As the swearing-in of members of the 11th parliament nears the end, it is these same legislators who will decide who the next speaker of parliament will be. However, the race is largely between incumbent speaker Rebecca Kadaga and her deputy Jacob Bolanya. Just like it was five years ago, the contenders have left the party with the task of deciding who it will choose since the NRM candidate almost certainly becomes speaker. As the party awaits what will come out of the Central Executive Committee, some political experts are arguing that failure to come up with one candidate will have dire political ramifications for NRM. It may also end up fracturing NRM, especially the caucus. Some of the damages may take long to be repaired. It may even affect the performance of the party. Other experts argue that Central Executive Committee has a simple role to play. Uh, we have seen before that when there is controversy, when there is uh, disagreement, when a particular issue is sick, the chairman of the party usually has the master card. And I would like to believe that in this particular saga, in this particular uh, chaos, or, you know, still the chairman has the master card. If the chairman prefers any candidate out of the two to be the speaker, there's no doubt that he will be. According to Professor Kareja, the speakership race is not hinged on ideology and deliverables. It seems to be more about privileges and uh, status and, uh, and, uh, and budgets from the talks that have been moving around. And that raises the question, to what extent is the legislature falling into the trap of being accused of what has befallen the executive? According to some members of SEC, in 2016, Kadaga allegedly pledged not to run again if she was given the party endorsement. But will this have a bearing on what SEC will decide? So now the next question would be, if she had made that commitment and goes against it now, how will you trust her as a speaker for the next five years? The fact that Kadaga had said that she would serve her last time and want to serve more terms is not new to SEC. The chairman of the party has on several occasions told the Ugandans that he's serving the last term or two terms, but the constitution had to be changed. And the engineer was Kadaka, who helped the president to change the term limits and the age limits. Another matter that some experts think should be considered by SEC is the regions where the two contenders come from. Actually, where President Museven garnered a lot of votes against opposition, and Busogawa Unity Platform Robert Chagulanyi performed well, and the president's share of votes dropped from 2016. She can have an excuse of saying there's a vice chairperson for Eastern Uganda, me, I'm just second vice, and so somebody else should account for that, which is a, a Mike. Mkura. Then, of course, Oranya would say, well, I did this mobilization and brought all these people. But others have counter-argued that, no, wait a minute, it was OWC and so on and so forth. To me, I think uh, the yardstick should be the performance. It should be the performance of the speaker. Has he performed according to the expectations of the party? And if he has, she has not, then there should be, those should constitute, that should constitute the reasons as to why they want to replace her. Experts are saying that it is a test of time for the two candidates, especially Jacob Olanya and Rebecca Kadaga, to see if they will subject themselves to the decision made by SEC or the NRM caucus. And in case any of the candidates defies that and goes ahead and contests, it will mean they have been continuously pursuing their personal interests rather than the national interests. Sudir Yarhanga, NTV.